Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm gonna to take you guys through the steps to create my wild moon child cup. This is a design I did last year and it's one of my all time favorite designs. I'm gonna put a different spin on this though and make it more of like a winter solstice, kind of darker theme than how I had originally done it. And the main technique that we'll be focusing on this video is sectional water slide. So I'm gonna show you how to mount a sectional piece of water slide like I did for this design. This is my favorite use of water slide, so I hope this is helpful for you guys. It's not easy, but it creates a gorgeous look on your cup with so much depth and it's gorgeous. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. guys so I'm starting with cups that have been prepped and spray painted already um, I've showed you guys that a lot so I'm not going to go over the prep and spray paint part but I'm using my little heater here to warm them up this is one of my favorite tricks for applying epoxy for epoxy method glitter you want to get your cup really warm uh, this is going to help spread the epoxy on nice and smooth so if you've ever struggled with lines in your glitter after you've applied epoxy method glitter try putting your cups in front of the heater to get them warm before you spread on that epoxy and then let it sit for a while and the lines should smooth out on their own. I'm using parchment paper to catch the excess glitter. I just like using parchment paper because the glitter doesn't stick to it and I could reuse it a few times. Now that my cup's warm, I'm going to apply less than one milliliter of epoxy. And using a gloved hand, I'm just going to spread the epoxy as evenly as possible, making sure I get every single piece of my cup, paying close attention to any kind of like indents or something around the bottom. And then I'm going to let that sit on my rack for a couple minutes just so that those lines and the epoxy totally smooth themselves themselves out. If my cup isn't warm enough, it doesn't feel warm to me, then I put it back in front of the heater just to get it warm again, and then we'll apply the epoxy. You also want to make sure that you're using less than one milliliter of epoxy on your cup for epoxy method. If you find that your glitter looks like patchy or weird, you might have put too much of epoxy, so just a tiny, tiny bit. All right, and so for our ombre, I'm gonna apply my glitter in the same way I always do for an ombre. We're gonna start with the chunkier or more dominant color. In this case, it's Scuttle. Scuttle is kind of a small, chunkier mix. It's got some golds, teals, blues, greens. It's just a beautiful gold. One of my favorite glitters from PT Olive Glitter. And I'm just lightly sprinkling glitter on at like the corner of my cup with a uh, cup tilted up so that it kind of falls down and then I'm going to put full coverage on the bottom. I'm going to tap off the excess and I'm going to put basic blackboard on the top. This is a finer glitter. It's a 0 .008, .008 cut and it's going to get in between all those little spots um, really nicely so it's going to create a really soft ombre. I'm not going to do full coverage with either color yet because I'm still just kind of building up my fade. So you don't want to try and get it all done in like one shot. I kind of go back and forth between both colors until I build up to a nice fade. As you can see here, um, it's starting to look good. And so then we're going to really let it rip towards the end to make sure that we've got full coverage through both colors. So notice now on the black, I'm really just pouring it on thick all the way from the top to the bottom. And I'm gonna make sure that I've really got it coated. With these finer cuts of glitter, it really does help after you've applied it all to kind of let it sit and look at it again and make sure that everything looks even. If it doesn't, just apply more. 
For this maroon and rose gold one, I'm gonna start with my chunkiest color, which in this case is Wet Incarnation. This is a really chunky mix, so I'm only gonna apply a little bit. You'll notice I have really, really sparse coverage on that first pass, and I'm not really applying any of it to the bottom. I'm gonna use Wanderlust, which is kind of a finer cut and I'm gonna cover that bottom. I don't wanna cover my whole bottom of the cup with that Wet Incarnation Chunky Glitter because it's gonna be really hard for me to coat the corner bottom of that cup later on with epoxy. It's just too much. So I'm putting Wet Incarnation on there on the bottom and it's also gonna help me with my ombre uh, on the sides. So again, I'm just tilting my cup up and I'm gonna lightly sprinkle some of this Wet Incarnation to, or excuse me, I'm gonna lightly sprinkle on the Wanderlust to help me out with this fade. All right, and next we're gonna tap off the excess before we move into our top color, which for the top we're gonna to use Figgy. I'm gonna put full coverage around that top rim there, and then I'm gonna tilt my cup downwards, and I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle that figgy um, down to the bottom of my cup, like you see here. Um, not full coverage yet, um, because we're still kind of laying out the rough draft, if you will, for our fade. So again, I'm gonna tap off the excess, and then I'm gonna go back in with Wanderlust. This time I'm gonna really let it rip. I wanna try and make sure that my fade for that bottom color really starts at the top of my cup and fades all the way down. Then we're gonna tap it off again and then we're gonna really let it rip with Figgy this time and we're gonna get full coverage all the way from the top to the bottom. So everything's faded really nice. We're gonna let this dry for two to three hours and then we will move into our first coat of epoxy. Notice on this chunkier glittered cup, I am gonna tap down those chunky pieces just a little bit. I don't wanna tap it down too much because I don't want my glitter to look like burnished or something, okay? So, these are ready to dry. I'm gonna put my first coat on of epoxy on the turner and then I'm going to let that dry for four to six hours and then immediately go into my second coat and let my second coat dry for eight to 12 hours. Then I'm gonna take it off my turner and I am going to sand my cup. I never sand before two coats of glitter. So you wanna make sure you at least have two to three coats on there and I'm gonna go in with my sanding block I'm using a 60 grit and an 80 grit sanding block and I'm gonna sand down the top rim of my cup to expose a thin line of stainless steel around the outside top of my cup. This is what will later establish the seal. So I'm sealing the whole cup with epoxy and that epoxy is gonna adhere to the outside rim of that little line that I'm making rather than the seal being established at the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. I'm also going to sand the bottom rim of my cup where it's a little bumpy, but you wanna be careful that you don't sand down too far. It's pretty easy to sand all the way down to the paint or the stainless steel at this point. So just be kind of gentle. You just mainly want to knock off any kind of um, like rough pieces around that corner edge. Also, it helps if you sand around the outside on the sides and then sand the bottom to create like a point, if that makes sense. It's kind of what I'm doing there. And then I'm going to sand off any bumps on the side. After we've got all our sanding done, I'm gonna rinse this off in the sink and dry it off really well and get it ready for the next steps. All right, so real quick, you guys, I'm gonna show you how I print the water slide for this particular project because it's a little more complicated than how we would normally do it. I've got Google Docs open here. I use this a lot for printing water slides. You could also use Microsoft Word if you have that. This is just a free program I like to use. So I'm gonna to go to page setup and I'm gonna change the paper size to A4. And then we're gonna change these margins all to zero. Okay, so that's good. And then we're gonna insert 
first our marble image. We have it already saved to our computer. I have it saved to my desktop so it's easy to find. So there's that. You wanna make sure that your marble image or your background image spans, you know, at least probably about nine inches. It depends on how uh, long your cup is. Um, but you wanna give yourself plenty of room to work with. So I would say like at least eight inches long here for your marble image. And then I'm gonna insert the moon image that I'm gonna layer over the top of this. Now the moon image is so large, uh, Google Docs won't let you just put it in there from your computer. So you have to insert it through Google Drive. If you guys have Google Drive, this is a great uh, resource to store all your images and stuff so you don't have to keep them on your computer. So here is my moon image. I will have this whole moon clip art series um, linked in the description box below if you guys wanna purchase it. It comes with a ton of beautiful images. So this is the one we're using here and I'm just gonna click insert. Oh, and see what I did here? When I clicked insert, uh, my marble image was still selected, so it just replaced my marble image with this image, so we're gonna have to replace the marble one. But anyway, when you <laughs> put your picture in there, you wanna make sure that you have the wrap text option selected, and then you have this drop-down menu set to zero margins. And then you'll kinda wanna resize this a little bit so it's a little, easier to work with. Okay, so make sure everything is unselected. You don't have any images selected. We're gonna go back and insert our marble. Hopefully this time it doesn't take away our moon. So there's the marble. Okay, and we're also going to change the wrap text on this one to the center option and zero inches for the margin. And I'm gonna move this moon out of the way and we're gonna move this marble all the way up to the top of our page. You could use your arrow keys on your keyboard. Makes it a little easier. And I wanna move that marble image all the way to the top of my page. And then the moon, come back here moon, we want this to be layered over the top. Okay, so if you guys have a different program that you like to do this in, totally fine. This is just what I think, this is what I use, it's easier for me. Now, see this ruler here up the top and the ruler to the side? You're just gonna kinda eyeball how big this moon image is because you wanna make sure it's not too big but also not too small so that it has a nice impact when it's on your cup. So I'm thinking mine is about one, two, it's about three inches wide, which is pretty standard for a decal on any cup. So that's good for me and then I want to look at how long it is. It looks like it's a, just under four inches, so that's good. And then you want to allow a good inch and a half or two inches from the top here. And you'll see why later. So this looks great. I think I'm actually going to move this down just a little bit. Okay, so this looks great. This is what I want. And we are ready to print our water slide. So you're just going to go to File, Print. Okay, and then when you get to this screen, you're gonna wanna check a few things. So the first thing is that this paper size needs to be set to A4. See how when we did that, it made sure that our image spans edge to edge. Okay, we're also gonna check to see if this moon looks big enough to us. It To me, it looks okay. I think I actually, I want it just like a little bit bigger. Make sure it's centered there. 
That looks good. Okay. So here we go. File, print, oops, file, print, and more settings. This paper size again needs to be at A4. Perfect. You want to make sure that the scale is set to default. Okay. I was messing around with that the other day. You want that at default. And then we're going to click print using system dialog. This is all the way at the bottom of our screen here. So we're going to click that and we're going to go to preferences. We want to change this to photo printing. Yours will look a little bit different depending on what kind of printer and stuff you have. I always use Pro Luster when I'm printing on water, clear water side. You want to change this paper size to A4. The photo quality or print quality will be high. And we'll say OK, apply, and then we'll go to print. And then I'll show you guys what we do next. OK, so after we've got this printed, I'm going to spray it three times with Rust-Oleum 2 times clear gloss spray. And you guys, one thing to remember when you're sealing your water slide, three light coats. You don't want any kind of drips. You don't want any pooling. And you also want to make sure that you shake your can of sealant really, really well before you spray that water slide sheet. Okay. Next, I'm going to make the template for where we will put our water slide on the cup. I'm going to make the template out of a piece of like paper. You use notebook paper or whatever you have laying around. I'm going to wrap it around the cup a little bit to kind of determine the width that I want to make my um, like a V cut or my triangle. And I'm going to measure that with a ruler. For this one, I think I determined I wanted it to be like six inches wide, maybe five and a half, I can't remember. And then you're going to just make another mark at the bottom of your paper too. That's also the same width. So you're going to mark, you know, five and a half here at the bottom as well. And once you've got that marked off, you're going to use those two marks to fold a straight line just like this. And then we're going to trim that small piece off. And then you'll fold this larger piece of paper in half. And along the fold, you're going to mark how long you want your V, your V shape to be on your cup. So for this one, I decided that I wanted my V to come down on my cup about seven inches. So then you're going to mark seven inches down on your paper at the fold line. I think I ended up with seven and a half. I think I wanted seven and a half instead. <laughs> and then you'll line up your ruler from the mark that you made on the fold line with the corner at the flappy part so that you're kind of making like a triangle that will be completely even on both sides. So it's almost kind of like making a snowflake, I guess. And then I'm just gonna use my craft knife to trim there along that line. So what we're left with here is a perfectly balanced triangle um, that we're gonna use as our stencil. I like to mark them so I could use them later so I'm not having to waste paper and time measuring over and over again if I'm making more of these. I'm gonna just lightly tape it to the cup and tape along the edge there. So again, all we created was a little template um, to make an easy way to measure a perfect V down the center of our cup. So this is kind of similar to how I do my tracksuit split cup. It's just a le it's less guesswork in the measuring. It's a lot easier to do. I'm going to use saran wrap to mask off the remainder of my cup. You want to really make sure that you get that saran wrap nice and sealed. And then I'm going to spray paint that V section with white flat spray paint. Once that dries, I'm going to spray it with gloss clear spray. You want to make sure that your little V split there is glossy before you apply your water slide. I'm just going to apply my water slide. Um, remember, we already sealed it three times with Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray, and I just 
trimmed the printed part and then put it in some room temp water and then I carefully transferred it to that center that little V section that we made it's really hard to get it like centered without distorting the moon shape um, if you guys worked with water slide before you know what I mean um, that water slide should be a little bit stretchy so you should be able to work with it a little bit um, and then just kind of squeegee out the excess water and try and keep out all the wrinkles and stuff and the bubbles. I know this part's hard, you guys, but just bear with me, okay? Um, I use Kodiak brand water slide. I have an inkjet printer and with a little practice, it can be done. I promise you, okay? Um, I'm gonna trim off the large excess pieces with my craft knife. Do not trim it along the edge of the tape yet. We're gonna wait a little bit to do that, but we also don't want those large sections of excess water slide to dry onto our cup because it's a pain in the butt to remove later. So we're just gonna kind of trim off those large sections first and then let my cup dry for a little bit really double checking that we've got all the bumps and the bubbles out and then i'm going to come back with my craft knife after about 20 minutes and i'm going to trim the excess along the tape line there so i really get a good clean edge you don't want to do this immediately after you apply your water slide because it has a tendency to snag on your knife a little bit so anyway, we're just gonna trim that excess and then I'm gonna remove my tape. Oh, also you wanna trim off this top part here. You just run your knife along the top rim of the cup, comes off really clean. So then you're gonna remove your tape and then I'm gonna replace that same tape <laughs> a quarter inch or no, like an eighth of an inch away from the edge of that water slide section. The reason I'm doing this is because I am going to epoxy over just this water slide section with some sparkly epoxy. This is really extra. This takes a lot of extra time to do it this way. If you wanted to cover your whole cup with sparkly epoxy, you totally could, but I don't like adding that sparkly epoxy over the rest of my glitter because I feel like it kind of changes the depth of the glitter so I like to be really difficult <laughs> and apply it just over this one section I think it looks so magical to have that like really subtle sparkle to that marble texture in this image and have that contrasting right next to your regular glitter I think it's really pretty so that's why I do it this way and it doesn't take that much longer. I just apply it to this little section here. I let it dry for 45 minutes, and then I remove the tape, and then I come back after four hours and coat my whole cup with regular epoxy like I normally would, okay? Um, I wait for that coat to dry for about eight to 12 hours and do any other necessary sanding that I might have to do, and then it's on to the decals. I'm just using adhesive vinyl that I cut into 11.5 by 0.15 inch strips. I use that with the shape feature in Cricut Design Space. I've showed you guys how to do this before. And I'm just placing it along the edge of that section on both sides, trimming it at the top rim of my cup, and I'm gonna let them both overlap down there at the bottom to create this diamond point. You'll see what I mean here in a second. And you're just gonna trim off both sides of that little triangle there, or the diamond. So we're gonna trim off this side and we're gonna trim off the other side. If you were super good with your craft knife, you could probably miter this corner. Um, but every time I try to miter it, it just looked weird. So I just do this little overlap diamond technique and trim the sides like that. And I think it turns out fine. So once you've got that all trimmed up, you'll put the decal on the back um, like you normally would. 
I have this same image for the Stay Wild Moonchild SVG for free in my Flynn Sisters community group. There's a link for the group down below in the description box, and you can find this file along with a bunch of other files for free in my group if you guys want to use those. My motto when putting on decals is always measure twice, cut once, so I take a lot of time to measure, make sure it's centered. And then when you remove your transfer tape, try to remove it as closely to the cup as possible to avoid any bubbles. All right, and then to seal my decals in my vinyl lines, I'm using Mod Podge Clear Acrylic Sealer, the matte one. Um, this works great and it dries a lot faster than Quick Coat, so that's why I'm using it instead of like a urethane sealer. Um, and then I'm just going to apply my final coats of epoxy once that's dry and we were done. So that's it, you guys. I know it's a lot of steps. <laughs> I know this one was not very easy, but it is one of my favorite designs and I think it just looks so classy, so elegant and so beautiful. Thank you so, so much for watching my video. If you guys liked it, please be sure to give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that bell button so you don't miss a new video. We do upload every Wednesday and Saturday. See you soon. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.